Hey, this is Oren Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Eberts, welcome to the first official ShapeMonkey tutorial. ShapeMonkey is a procedural tool for After Effects that'll help you quickly create anything from really simple to highly complex shape layer animations. Let me show you the basics. We're gonna start with the default and get more complex as we go. I've got a five second comp, and I set the work area to two seconds. The work area will designate the time frame that all the shapes will be triggered in. You'll need a minimum of one frame per shape layer. And now I'll just click do it. The default setting will create this cool little circle animation for you. What you're seeing are 10 circles animating for 30 frames each with a large ease set to ease out. Each shape is treated with either a fill, stroke, dash stroke, fill and stroke, or fill and dash. The layers have an opacity setting that's somewhere between 50 and 100% and the fill is white and the stroke is this goldish color. The shapes are transitioning in and out based on a random selection of fade, grow, and shrink. The animation section is not active, so the only motion you're seeing comes from the transition section. Let's undo that and do another build. For this one, I'll start with 30 copies. ShapeMonkey has a few dozen preset shapes and geometry, but you can also create your own shape, use text, or use a vector layer as a source. But I'll keep it simple and select square, add a preset palette to the fill and stroke, change my transition to linear right on, and linear right off, and now head to the animation section and turn on start scale, which is set to random, with a slider strength of about 50% and I'll turn on the start position and set that to random left, also with a slider strength of about 50%, and click do it, and we get this. Now go back to position and change random left to random right, and click that again. And we come up with this constructivist montage thing that's made up of 60 randomly sized squares distributed to the left and right of the original position. But once again, like the default settings, the only animation we're really seeing here is coming from the right on and off of the transition section. Okay, so now let's go over the basics of the animation section. The system is meant to be very intuitive and really made for quick experimentation. It's made up of two basic settings, the start and the end state of the animation. Each of these settings are identical and they both use the original shape setting as their point of reference. The easiest way to show you how this works is to select the simple move animation preset. Both the start and end position are active. The start dropdown is set to left and its slider strength is about one third of the way. The end position is set to right and the slider is pretty much the same there too. What's gonna happen is that the square is gonna start to the left of the original position, which was centered, and move to the right of the original position so we can click do it, and there you go, pretty simple. And with that in mind, I'll go back to the previous build to make a few adjustments. Turn on the end position and set that to random right and the slider strength at about 50% and make a few more minor adjustments and click do it. And now we get a series of squares that animates from left to right. And I can go back to the UI and click flip start and end and do another build that goes the other way. Now we'll go into the composition window and if I select one of the control layers you'll see a bunch of effects pop up in the effects panel that can control transformations like scale, rotation, or I can add turbulence or drift here too. You see how quickly you can experiment with variations. You can easily change shapes, drop down actions, slider settings, transitions, interpolations, palette animations, effects, whatever, and you'll find that you can quickly create complex shape layer animations in a few minutes that would normally have taken you hours. So in a nutshell, that's the basics, but there's a lot more to it than that, and I recommend downloading the free trial and just start messing with it yourself, or watch the rest of the tutorial for the breakdown of each section and some tips and tricks to help get you started. From Dan Eberts, I'm Oren Zucker, and enjoy your new monkey!